right, I want to just get into it. Uh, this is called, this is a letter, which, you know, the jury's even out if this is real. There are people who, who absolutely think this is a legit letter from Clement of Alexandria of, I believe, the 2nd century. And uh, it, it certainly looks compelling, but because of some of the content and, and other things, some people will find it not real, especially when it comes to secret anything and, and wisdom being shared that wasn't within the closed canon of the Bible. I think I'm going to leave some of Margaret Barker's stuff for a while, even though it was also interesting to look into about the mindset of maybe the Deuteronomist and some of the... Uh, what would you say, the claims that she would make about some of the things that were being purged? Still not sure exactly where I land on that, but it is interesting because we would love to know, uh, we would love to know what else was being, uh, what else they had and what else uh, was being referred to. We know that Jesus uh, appealed to scriptures and of all types, and there are some that aren't within the closed canon of what we have in the Bible at right now. And we know that Ezra wrote some books uh, that weren't for necessarily everybody's consumption. And this will go into that as well. And maybe that's part of the reason why it's not, it wasn't, you know, it, it's just a letter. It's not, it's just a letter. It wouldn't be canon anyway, but it talks about this secret gospel where we have the gospel of mark uh in short what will be kind of through here and it's not very long i don't want to read all of it because i want to make it short but uh the the gist of it is is that this guy theodore writes to clement and asks him about this secret gospel that's going around and you know it's different than some of the things that we heard and some of it might sound a little odd and maybe even perverse to this Theodore guy. And so Clement is going to write back and give his, give his response. And again, it's, uh, it, it seems like maybe some of it, at the very least, would have been misrepresented. If, you know, and, and this is just interesting. I want to, let me make sure I can fit everywhere here. Yeah, not very good, right? I'm going to be covering up some of it, I guess, but that's that's all right. So he talks about these Carpo, uh, Carpocratians who were the group that has this, you know, they, they have gotten hold of this secret gospel of Mark. And uh, I don't we don't know what Theodore wrote and the examples of what we wrote, but here is some of the reply. And Clement will say that they are like the wandering stars of prophecy. And though they th they have some things that though they may be speaking some truth at times, uh, though not all true things are the truth. And it has to do in large part the way I read it is that even though people can be saying things that are technically true, it can be misrepresenting things in a light that is is not meant to be in that light. And, you know, we just, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we, we get this all the time, where people will quote things, but they will straw man it or totally misrepresent it. And, you know, we're used to that. So it's it's the same sort of thing. And some of this rings true to me. Um, and it's just very interesting. So uh, now of the things they keep saying about the divinely inspired gospel of Mark, some are altogether falsifications and others, even if they do contain some true elements. Nevertheless, they are not reported truly. For the true things are being mixed with uh, inventions. Think of philosophies of man mingled with with scripture are falsified so that, as the saying goes, even the salt loses its savor. And this is the interesting part kind of here. Well, there's a few interesting, but it's it's short. As for Mark, uh, I wish I could just make it. I'm just going to make it bigger, even though it's I'm going to be cutting off some of some of it just to. As for Mark. Uh, then during Peter's stay in Rome, he wrote an account of the Lord's doings, 
not, however, declaring all of them, nor yet hinting at the secret ones, but high, but selecting that he thought most, what he thought most useful for increasing the faith of those being instructed. So we have Mark visiting Peter, gathering all this information, and we have the Gospel of Mark, and we can think of the secret Gospel of Mark as being like an expanded version. I think of the Gospel of Mark being a part of ex kind of bringing people in, uh, like being instructed, but then we have, and I might be using the terms wrong, but in my mind, like to be instructed at one level, and then we will have the next level, uh, where's the term, but Peter, when Peter died a martyr, Mark came over to Alexandria bringing both his own notes and those of Peter, from which he transferred to his former book the thing suitable to uh, whatever makes for progress towards knowledge. Thus he composed a more spiritual gospel for the use of those who are being perfected. Kind of on a different level. We know that uh, Jesus, uh, maybe at the Mount of Transfiguration, had this sort of knowledge for Peter, James, and John that we didn't exactly know. And and he will go again at... He will... will We'll bring up another instance. It's it's the naked man in Mark, I think, chapter 14, uh, where he's kind of bringing it up like this expanded version, and this is kind of sounding odd to this Theodore. So uh, he's already, Clement has already said that there is a gospel of Mark and a, an expanded gospel of Mark that people are are reading from. And he's also, like, we understand that we have to be very careful about forgeries and getting the the wrong idea. But I think sometimes we do throw the baby out with the bathwater, and that's what they did in being, you know, maybe it was ultra necessary to do that in some cases. But we do know that when things didn't fit the paradigm, they just got rid of it. Uh, let's see. Thus, he nevertheless, he yet nevertheless he yet did not divulge the things not to be uttered, nor did he write down the hierophantic teachings of the Lord. And hier hierophantic should make you think of like temple priests. Uh, but the stories already written, he yet he added yet others and. Moreover, brought in certain sayings in which he knew the interpretation would, as a mystagogue, lead the hearers into the innermost sanctuary of the truth hidden by seven veils. Thus, in some he prepared matters, neither grudgingly nor incautiously, and da 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 in Alexandria, to be safeguarded, blah, blah, blah. And then this, this group, through deceitful arts, got a hold of this presbyter of the church of alexandria and he got a copy of this secret gospel of mark that uh which he both interpreted according to the blasphemous and carnal desire or his blasphemous and carnal desire and moreover polluting or polluted mixing with the spotless and holy words utterly shameless lies from the mixture in is drawn off the teachings of the cappadocians he brings up these different, um, these different, it's kind of like eyes to see, not every, uh, things from the Bible as well, like the Proverbs we have, uh, from him who has, shall not be taken away, let the fool walk in darkness, that's Ecclesiastes, uh, children of light is First Thessalonians, uh, and di daylight uh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, that's 2 Corinthians, and just kind of hinting towards there There are certain things kind of that uh, if if it was to be just let given to everybody, people would misrepresent it in a way that would do more harm than than good. So let's just let's just keep it for people that we know are at a certain, you know, at are at a, you know, are, are just ready for it. We can determine are ready for this sort of thing. Uh, and then they bring up, he does bring up the, the, the naked man, right? So, and, 
Clement is going to quote from it word for word from this secret gospel of Mark to this Theodore, uh, which I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but again, take this for a word of uh, a grain of salt and use discernment. So after all three, after three days, he shall arise. And again, as members of the church, this should ring some bells in some ways, but you can also see how it could be misrepresented. Uh, and then came into Bethany, and a certain woman whose brother had died was there. And coming, she prostrated herself before Jesus and says to him, Son of David, have mercy on me. But the disciples rebuked her, and Jesus, being angered, went off with her into the garden where the tomb was, and straightway a great cry was heard from the tomb. And going near, Jesus rolled away the stone from the door of the tomb and straightway going in where the youth was. And remember, if this is a, from the secret gospel of Mark, uh, then even though we have parables that are supposed to be like higher teachings, uh, if this is a secret gospel of Mark that is supposed to be for a more initiated or more kind of a, a, a priestly group, then it still is using this kind of parable, which is, it's just interesting. So anyway, and straightway going in where the youth was, he stretched forth his hand and raised him, seizing his hand. So a, a temple or a, a, a resurrection narrative. But the youth looking upon him, loved him and be, began to beseech him that he might be with him and going out of the tomb. And they came into the house of the youth for he was rich, and after six days Jesus told him what to do, and in the evening the youth comes to him wearing a linen cloth over his naked body, and he remained with him that night, for Jesus taught him the mystery of the kingdom of God, and thence arising he returned to the other side of Jordan, uh, and then came James and John, the naked man, uh, but naked man and naked man and the other things which, which you wrote are not found. So, it sounds like they're misrepresenting the nature of of Jesus and, and this man. And this is what was bothering this Theodore. And uh, and and uh, Clement is saying, but naked man with naked man and the other things which you wrote are, are not found. That he was teaching him the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but it wasn't this other perverse misrepresent misrepresentation, right? Uh, and after these words, and he comes down to Jericho, and the secret gospel adds only, and the sister of the youth whom Jesus loved and his mother and Salome were there, and Jesus did not receive him. And many other things which you wrote both seem to be uh, seem to be and are falsification. So it would have been interesting to see uh, Theodore, you know, all these different gripes and concerns that he has. And it's interesting that he will first quote it verbatim, and then begin to say the things that aren't there. And now the true explanation and that which accords with the true philosophy. Da, 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 da. Anyway, it's kind of interesting. I think it uh, is interesting, especially as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints with, with, our, with our love of the temples and our emphasis on the temples and our open canon uh, sort of viewpoint in some ways, even though we don't view everything as scripture equally. We have the Bible being the word of God of, as long as it is translated correctly. We have the Book of Mormon. Uh, you know, we have the standard works. But it is interesting when we see things that gives m may give more light to uh, to some of the things that were going on uh, even though we don't necessarily take things from these apocryphal writings as as scripture themselves. So anyway, I thought I found that that to be interesting uh, when I read it uh, a few years back, and I will have some other ones for you if you find it interesting uh, yourselves. So let me know. Talk to you later. Bye.